I'm here today to tell you my story to show you how far. You can proceed when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm here today to tell you my story to show you how far back this goes. I'm going to show you my scars inside and out. I'm a Rebecca girl, Lester Roloff, 1976 to 1979. I was sent there court ordered. I was a ward of the state, removed by DCFS in the early 70s for abuse, which led me to foster homes, group homes, state homes, mental hospitals, to the runaway community, to juvenile detention, which led me to Rebecca by the age of 13. I wasn't a bad kid. I was an abused child. I thought I was finally safe. But I wasn't. When the doors locked, I didn't talk or see my family for the next three years. <laughs> These aren't regular homes. These aren't normal homes. This ain't even normal abuse, what we went through. The children that came in damaged like myself. We needed counselors and therapists, but there is none. I saw I tried to commit suicide, but I was thrown in lockup instead. I don't know how long I was even there. Um, I'm not here today about what happened to me. My concerns are the children of today. When I joined Breaking Cold Silence, I realized the dates and the pictures of some of these young children. And what happened to me in 1970 is happening to children in 2021. And that's a shame. But the best description I can give of IFB home, Independent Fundamental Baptist, the religious home, this is the best description I have used in the last 40 years of my story. Hi, I'm a sex offender. I went to church and got saved by Jesus. God put a burden on my heart to open a home and save children. Please let me reform your child. They don't do background checks. They believe in corporal punishment. The first abuse charge was Rebecca, 1973, which led to many court battles. Many court battles after different states, different homes, different stories. These are spinoff of Lester Roloff homes. They move in the middle of the night, state to state, chased out due to mental abuse, emotional, and physical. Most are the workers that came off of our farm back then in Roloff Enterprises in Corpus Christi, Texas. They, threw, they spread through the states after the federal raid in 1979. Religion is a belief. You cannot force a belief on anyone. If you're raised Catholic, you're going to have them beliefs. Everyone, every religion has its own Bible. Every religion has its own belief. Which one's right? Which one's wrong? There is no right and wrong. Whatever you're believed, whatever you're raised in. My mom was ILB. But you cannot force a child held behind fences and locked behind locks to believe in what you believe. But they try, and in the process, there was a horrific abuse done in God's name. I'm a survivor of it and a witness to others. I'm also a survivor of the biggest court case in church and state in ever, Lester Roloff versus Texas in 1973 to 1979, all the way to the Supreme Court, to the Christian alimony, till, till today. Many do not have any training with children, just that burden in their heart. There is no professional therapist, counselors, and teachers. And because of this, when I was released, I had no school credits. I had to get a GED, just like many others. Many ILP homes are through the state with horrific child abuse. How many children got to suffer at the hands of evil people? And God being all the others should be shut down now. There is no medical treatment. I watched a girl get stabbed three to five times in the back and sat in the office until her mom drove from Kansas to Texas to get her to get her to the hospital with stab wounds. We were given a chemical that stopped our monthlies. Stopped our monthlies. And we suffered many issues, female issues, and many couldn't bear children. I have no period the whole time I was there, three years. But don't get me wrong, babies were born and they were illegal adoption. And I do have that on their own words and testimony. Over 100 babies, no paperwork. But there is DNA now, and DNA has proved our stories. 
They do not believe in the law of the state, but the big black book, the King James Version Bible. We memorize chapters at a time just for a small privilege. We are beat black, blue, and bloody, told how worthless we are and not loved. There is no emotional support. We need oversight in these homes to protect our children of today. They need protection because they cannot speak out without punishment. I don't want any child to endure what I went through. Emotional, physical abuse. Now as a grown woman, I look back at the damage it's causing me through my life, my adult life. No children deserves an end before the start. I would like to take the last few minutes to express my experience of my home. I broke one of the top five rules. I got 20 licks with a board twice a week for three years. I'm so a sorry. A homemade board. I, know, I, I hate to interrupt you, but I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to be heard. Do you mind okay, wrapping I'm up? Done. I'm, okay, okay, thank you. A homemade board, two foot long with holes drilled in it. For the, to smooth the pain, the, the pain and the swelling and the bleeding, I would soak my bottom in the toilet water. I stood for hours, 10 hours or more. With, with one girl broke a rule, we all got punished. We are put in a lockup room, isolated with the intercom playing sermons 24 seven, no shower and little food. I experienced that punishment for three weeks or more for my suicide attempt. Many other girls experienced the punishments and some were far worse than I described. I just want to bring some light on the abuse and the torture that we endured through these homes through the years. And it's a shame that there's decades of us here from 1970 all the way to 2000 with the same stories and it's still going on and nothing is being done. Thank you for listening to me.